All right, how's it going? Today we're doing Shadow Throne Solo Flawless. We're using Night Stalker Hunter with um, if I can solve Rook. We start with Execution Vanishing Step with Devour and Weakening Grenades. We're using a Sniper, a Trace Rifle, and the Vidant's Breath. Uh, Trace Rifle can be subbed out for an SMG. It does have to be Void though. Um, and I don't think we have actually used the Sniper. Uh, so that can be whatever you want. I just use it so I can have double special, so I can get extra heavy drops. The Vitan's Breath is really good for this, especially with the new update, where it applies Volatile to enemies, even though you have good fucking Soul Rook. If you don't, it can proc Stylish Executioner to get that chain started. On this, you have the I think seven Labyrinth Architects you have to find and kill, as along with the Acolytes around them, everything else you don't have to kill. The Leviathan's Breath can two-shot to the body any Labyrinth Architect, which is really good. Really fast, really simple. But of course, getting a precision hit does really dramatically increase the draw time as it makes things much quicker. So to start off with, we're going to throw a grenade. That's just to get Stylish Executioners, so I can be invisible while uh, shooting the shots, just so I can aim a bit better. Unfortunately, it does dodge out of the way, but it's whatever. So now we got Bird, which is Tower of the Sky, so we're just going to go there. Just gonna clear up some of these guys, don't actually have to, but just felt like it. So now we got the bridge going on the bridge, spawns four phalanxes, two on the top, two on the bottom. But the two on the bottom will teleport up afterwards. So I'm just killing both uh, with a grenade. Gets the Stylish Executioner going. Yeah, I'm just going to kill things a bit. The Hobgoblin, which is the boss here, will run out if you cause enough commotion. So I'm just going to stay here and have a sight of all of that. And just kill things. There's a Hobgoblin there. He always goes there. One thing to mention as well, the Architect Artifact mod that gives you extra void damage on void weapon kill plays really nicely with this build. As you can see, it's dependent on how many abilities you have charged, and that includes your super, so it can go up to times four. I don't know the numbers on it, but it's very powerful. It also means you don't have to run them on your boots. So now we're here, we're gonna wanna go invisible so we can find the monitor, aim in his face, and then kill him just And then clean up the acolytes, find the next one. So now we're going on to the phalanx. Phalanx can be a bit annoying, but as long as you stay, you know, just before the entrance to that area, where the captain is before that, he'll come up to meet you and you should be fine. I'm getting a few kills and a uh, fruitile attempt, fruitile, futile attempt to get a orb for devour. Doesn't really matter though, as you can see, Phalanx is there. Yeah, try to hit him in the head, miss. Almost killed the captain. As you can see, it can do like three quarters of the guy's health if you have the void weapon loose. Onto the Tower of the Deep, which is right next to us. This is the captain. The captain is a bit annoying because it has a shield, but either way, it's still a two hit. It's just a bit slower. The captain also likes to run around the place and be annoying that way. Just killing a few things. 
could have ripped his shield off, but I didn't. As you can see, getting kills with the explosion from the Viking's Breath does actually apply volatile to them, so it counts as Savage Executioner kill. Now we're on to Temple of the Infinite, which is just across from here. Going on this bridge will spawn hobgoblins everywhere. You can ignore them. If you're inside, they can't hit you. If you're outside, just keep running and you'll be fine. Or get invisible. Accidentally, that's the only time you use the sniper in this run, which is an accidental hit. Onto Enfish, that's the Vandal in the garden. Gonna jump around this way to avoid the captain, but don't have to. Don't jump to the left there, you will die. Don't ask me how I know. Going here spawns a phalanx, but we're just gonna ignore him anyway. This is quite funny, since he's a vandal he can get knocked back by the Viking's breath and he actually falls off the map. Unfortunately that doesn't kill him, he just teleports right back there and spawns a bubble immediately. So I just shoot him in the face. Kill the rest of the acolytes. And that's all of them done, just gotta go back to the beginning to kill the final one. This is another captain, this time with swords. Can be a bit annoying because he teleports a lot. Another reason to be invisible, so you can catch them off guard. Two shot him, kill the acolytes, and then we're done. On to the descent. So for this part, don't, don't need to kill anything, so we're not going to. Just going to run straight through, they're really bad at killing you. I'm going to throw a smoke here so I can kill one and go invisible. Then I'm going to get the invisibility back again here. Gonna jump up this side. Gonna use my tether. My captain here. Don't need to. In fact, it doesn't help at all, really. I'm then gonna get a grenade kill so I can get an orb, so I can start devouring. So I can run straight through this section. I'm gonna kill the knight on the right. I'm gonna run up the right. I'm gonna kill the phalanx. That should have given me invisibility, but it didn't. Which is a bit annoying, so I'm just gonna dodge. But the thing to do here is just keep chaining phalanx kills and running through so you get your health back and invisibility. Then you just run up, and that's that bit done. On to the beams. Fun, fun beams. If you want to take this slow, I would not, you know, judge you for that. These ogres can be annoying because their blasts can push you around. In this intersection, just after it, I like to go invisible. It gives me enough time to sneak around this ogre. However, he has seen me and he will come around and try to do stuff. Here, yeah, I'm just gonna run straight past this one. Wanna be careful, watch your dodge timer. Because you're gonna wanna dodge as soon as possible. As you can see, I'm getting hit here. Ruins my momentum. But still managed to make the jump. This ogre, you are gonna wanna kill. Because we're, we're out of options for invisibility, so we're just gonna kill him. Can't kill him with one Leviathan's press shot, but a follow up nade, and that's fine. So, onto the shadow hallway. 
throw away, if you will. This bit's really easy. You just want to chain invisibility and possibly even devour. Now, since these guys die so quickly, full tower rounds won't activate if you. Oh, on your first kill, if you're shooting it straight on. So just remember that. This is faster the more mobility stat you have, because you're not sprinting. I only got up to tier 7 with this build, but it doesn't matter too much. Anyway, so we're out here. If you did take any damage, you are going to want to get hit by a thrall because your health won't start regening until the health meter is updated in any way. That glitch has been there since day one, and I don't think it's ever going to leave. So now we're just going to jump through these. You really don't have to fear them too much, because there's a fairly low chance you'll actually be running through them when they blast. Anyway, for this bit, we're going to want to come up on the left, hug the wall and jump up, and then we can avoid all these phalanxes really easily. So we're coming up to the Volgirth boss fight. You do want to be careful, because if you drop down into the arena, and the the objective hasn't updated, you're, you're self locked. It, nothing will spawn, whatever. If you see a darkness zone happen like that, that means you're fine. If not, just stay up there, run around a bit, wait, and it should happen. Anyway, so we're gonna run up to the left here, we're gonna hide, we're gonna wait for this wizard to spawn, and we're gonna throw a grenade and melt. So we get Sarge the Executioner up. Then we're gonna go back to the start and then do a anti clockwise rotation. You should probably also spawn an orb so you can get Devour going. The goblins are a bit annoying, but you just have to kill them first. Honestly, this Trace Rifle does as well as an SMG does against these Blizzards, so you might as well just use that. Actually, that's probably a bit better. Yeah. Anyway, so now we've got all four of those. I'm gonna dunk it here. If you're invisible, you won't do anything, but then when you get out, you will. I'm gonna want to start the tether, kill all the orbs, and now if we get Leviathan's Breath hits, critical hits, we can infinitely stagger Vulgeth. Meaning, yeah, he just can't do anything. You just keep hitting him. I think if you miss a headshot, it's a tight window to get the next one, but it is still possible. Yeah, as you can see, I got the stagger there, even though I didn't get the crit. Anyway, so that's that done. Really easy. Now, there's not much to do but run to the next bit. And I, I'm serious about that, there's no sure you can just run through everything. <laughs> Which is what we're gonna do. My strength is with you, Gilliam. So the wizards here, they're not paying attention, so you can run straight through them and they won't have time to react before you're up the lift. No, 
out onto the first floor of enemies. We can just run straight through them. I go to the side a bit because I get spotted earlier than I should have. Which means I do lose a bit of health here, but I've never died doing this. So, yeah. Probably won't. If you're not on 100 resilience, by the way, be on 100 resilience. No reason not to. Free 30% damage resist. So now for these captains, they are a bit annoying, so I'm going to go invisible here. Which didn't really do anything. Just a hit my own. Anyway, so for the vandal bit, you want to go to the right, just walk straight past them. Up to the next floor. Some more captains. They are no problem at all. That last captain, he can follow you up to the next doorway, which we are going to sp spend a bit of time in because we need a super and heavy ammo. Because Bungie refuses to put rally banners in this dungeon. Not sure why. Usually with two special weapons it's much easier to get heavy ammo. But for whatever reason, luck is not on my side right now. So how's everyone's day doing? You good? Let me know in the comments. There's a heavy brick there, but I don't notice it for a bit. Uh, no. Alright. You are going to want as much heavy as possible. So now we're going to do the same thing, we're just going to chain invisibility while we run through these phalanxes. Now on to the next wall. Once again, very rare you'll actually be hit by any of these, mathematically, but if you want to take it slow, fair enough, because I do actually get hit there twice, but I don't die. So now on to the final lift. Going on to the Dueling Karu boss fight. Not too difficult, you just have to know how to deal with it, what order of operations you should be applying. So we're going to start off by tapping one of the knights and going to the left and throwing a grenade to kill the silence, as we'll also spawn an orb to give us the bow. Then we want to try to stag the knight so they teleport. We can do that with one revive that's first shot, placed well. They should all teleport back in the same spot. Throwing a tether will also get them to teleport. But Usually you'll be able to kill them all with one shot with the tether. Fortunately I was not able to, but I managed to get the kills quite easily. Now on to damaging Dylan Curry, you want to stand behind the table so she can't actually hit you. As you can see there, really easy, just lay on her face. Not like that. And then that's it. You're done. Shadow throw really easy. Solo flawless. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful. If you found it helpful, please leave a like and maybe subscribe. All that jazz. 
Hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you later.